So what do you do when you have something to throw away? You look for a garbage bin. Except this time, instead of a single bin, you're faced with six. You're faced with six. And they're all different colors. And the signs say weird things like food scraps and napkins only, or plastics one through five, mixed tin and aluminum. Or this is one of my favorites, the glass gobbler. You want to save the environment, but as you look in vain at the organic fair trade whole food cricket protein energy bar wrapper in your hand, it just doesn't seem to fit. What the heck are you supposed to do? You start to sweat. And then, relief. You spy a single black bin with a picture of a garbage can on it. And the sign says landfill, or waste, or garbage, exactly what you were looking for. You toss in your wrapper, and you walk away, trying not to run. So for someone like me who studies waste management, your problem is an interesting one. On the one hand, you did it right. Congratulations. Unfortunately, there is no other place for that type of waste to go except our local landfills, or the ocean if we're not careful. So that's a packaging problem, but not a waste management problem. You did the right thing. But on the other hand, I watched as that panic spread across your face as you tried to figure out where you could fit into this crazy system. And not only were those signs confusing, but all the signs everywhere you go say something different. Different museums in Vancouver, you have pictures and words that don't match anything you've seen at Quest. You go to Whistler, and all of a sudden, people are just taking your waste for you and sorting it behind closed doors. Everything's different. How can all of these businesses expect you to get it right every single time without getting totally stressed out about it? They can't. And that's the first problem I'm going to talk about today. I believe that too much onus is placed on citizens and consumers for sorting it right, decreasing contamination, and you know, like saving the environment and stuff. The fact is, we still can't go to the grocery store and buy meat, unless it's on a styrofoam tray or wrapped in a bit of soft plastic. Or if we're not buying meat and we're buying produce, there's all those nice little rolls of little plastic bags that we can put our food in. And you know, what's one plastic bag when the alternative is your broccoli head crumbling to pieces in your backpack? These are huge problems, but they're not going to change overnight. So the question becomes, what do we do in the meantime? Many of you may know that last year Squamish decided to expand its landfill in order to accommodate its growing population. But at the same time, the province of BC is trying to mandate so that no new organics are entering landfills by the year 2020, which is coming up pretty soon. So to accommodate this, Squamish has adopted something called high mixed waste tip fees. And this means you're paying $320 a ton every time you dump landfill waste that has more than 5% contamination. But on the other hand, you're paying less than half of that price if you've properly sorted your waste. And you'd expect businesses to jump right on top of this, save costs, save environmental costs, put out a good face to the consumers. But Quest, and I suspect many other places too, just don't see that there are some easy ways to figure out how to reduce contamination. And they swallow this cost as, you know, something to do with business. And so that's where I come in. Last year, under faculty supervision, I conducted a series of audits, waste audits, to understand how Quest students engage with our waste system and to figure out the contamination levels that result from that. And so this means we took 24 hours worth of waste. I had a lot of volunteers who helped me. They were awesome. And we sorted that waste by stream and then within streams for contamination. This is what we got for our landfill stream. You can see that almost 70% of our landfill was contaminated with recyclable and compostable objects. And that's a huge problem because as those compostable wastes, which you can see are the primary contaminant, as they go to landfill, they break down, they release methane into our ever-warming atmosphere. And so what could we do? I conducted a second study after realizing that we had to figure out what consumers were getting wrong and why this idea that landfill contamination wasn't coming across. Because when I looked at the other pie charts, all of our recycling streams were sorted really, really well. Class students were doing great at recycling, just not great at landfill. And so I tried to figure out what they were doing, what choices were happening, and with which items to make sure that people were getting this wrong or to help them get it right. And so I conducted a behavioral project. I hypothesized that students, when confused, are going to look at their item and try to match it to the items that came before. 
And so I sat in front of our academic building, a waste system there, for three days, and I watched what people did under a series of manipulations. On the first day, I took off all of the lids, and I made sure that inside every bin was only the items that should be there. So under landfill, I had only landfill items, and under compost, I had only compostable items. And people did a great job. Almost everybody sorted their waste properly. I got a lot of correct choices. On my second day, I switched things up. So under my landfill sign, I had only compostable items. Under my compost sign, I had only paper or only recyclable items. And I wanted to see what people would do. I expected, you know, if people matched their items successfully to the bin items, that they would get their choices right. But almost nobody did. There were some great or situations where people would notice and kind of freak out, and then I'd have to step in and say, hey, it's okay, I'm doing research. I'll sort everything properly by the end. <laughs> But for the most part, students just went by the sign. Signs were the primary prompt for behavior. And so you can imagine the panic that ensued when on the third day, I took away signs completely and just left the bins still properly sorted. These are my results. The green bars represent correct choices, and the gray bars represent incorrect choices. You can see that the first day, everyone was right, and the second day, everyone was wrong. This told me that people followed the signs. Signs were the primary prompt for this type of behavior. But it was that third day that was most interesting to me because when people were confused and didn't have a sign to prompt them, they relied on the choices made before them. I chalk this up to like a social recycling norm where nobody wants to be the person who contaminated the recycling and made it all go to landfill. You don't want to be that person. <laughs> and so I figured that matching was really, really important. But at the same time, signs are the primary prompt for recycling behavior. So I had to figure out a system to match this matching behavior with the social recycling norm and with the signs that we were presenting people. And so with the help of a friend who's really good at design, we came up with a system that I like to think of as descriptive signage, which is exactly what it sounds like. The signs using pictures and colors and words describe exactly what items are supposed to be underneath it. But what to do about the garbage? Words like garbage and landfill and waste describe everything and in doing so describe nothing. And so we had to think of something different. I knew from my waste audits that the primary items students were putting in landfill that should go there were soft, squishy, crinkly, squeaky plastics. It's like styrofoam, plastic rack, it's plastic wrap, chewing gum, and other things like that. And so that's what we decided to call the stream. You can see here, and maybe you've seen around the school today, these are the systems that we established. I put up all of these signs last summer, and then through the fall and all of this semester too, I hazarded questions and jokes and feedback and comments people wrote on my signs telling me what worked and what didn't. It was amazing. People were involved in thinking. One of my favorite moments happened in a class where my teacher was doing a demonstration with an oil spill. And so they had vegetable oil in a fish tank filled with water. They were mopping it up with paper towels. And at the end of the demonstration, my teacher said, all right, I'm going to clean this up. I've got to figure out where to throw this out because some guy took away all the garbage bins. And instead of laughing, my class just kind of looked at me. <laughs> so I put my hand up, identified myself as the guy who had taken away all the garbage bins, and told my teacher that since it was a paper product contaminated with food waste, it could go in the compost bin. My teacher was a little embarrassed, understandably. Um, but the joke still stands. Every time we see each other now, if my teacher has an item, they say, hey, Sam, where does this go? And I'll tell them. And then we both say, hey, there's no such thing as garbage, right? I know I'm on the right track with this because when I did a follow-up audit, again with the help of volunteers, uh, four months after we installed it, these are our results. You can see that in March, our landfill contamination was at about 70%. But by December, the contamination had gone down to about 30%. Even better, think about all of the items that are going into the soft plastic stream over the course of a day. They're light, they're floaty, they could fly away in the air. So those, that 30% compost contamination could be a single apple core or an orange peel. That's only two incorrect student choices and missed a whole flood of completely correct choices made by this system. If we as a society want to get down to zero waste, businesses need to understand that people aren't just lazy and that's why they're getting these things wrong. People are confused and businesses need to take the responsibility, conduct research, figure out their contamination levels, and importantly, figure out the choices leading to that contamination. And then it's a simple media campaign, education program, 
or changing your signs and changing what they say on them to change that rhetoric around waste management and get people to sort things properly. Waste management is necessarily connected to hundreds of thousands of individuals, businesses, and even countries. Essential to this process of decontamination of our landfills is effective communication and I believe descriptive signage. So the next time you go anywhere, literally anywhere, take a look at the waste system provided for you. Is it clear? Is it inviting? Are there colors, pictures, words? If you still can't figure out where to put your organic fair trade whole food cricket protein energy bar wrapper, consider sticking it back in your pocket and taking it home to where you know how to throw it out. Thank you. <laughs>